honestly, man, like the more that I think about this, the more I feel like we might be totally fucked. Like it just feels like, yeah. you know, that meme of the dog in the house and the house is on fire and he's just smiling through this the beginning of the end. This yeah. is fine. Like if men don't kill themselves, they're exiting education and society and family life at the highest rates ever. Women are frantically pursuing careers only to discover that they're mm-hmm. unable to find a partner that they're attracted to and then jump on meds at 40 years old. The highest yeah. uh, percentage, uh, the highest group uh, that use meds uh, are between white women between 40 and 45 years old. And then the yeah. people who want kids can't find a partner that does as well. Birth rates declining, faith in the leaders mm-hmm. and the news organizations non existent. And everyone's just about sufficiently sedated not to notice or care that it's going on. That's a precise and accurate summary of how the West has declined and will collapse, yes. Fuck. I know. It's tr- and do you know what's worse, right? Is that the few that are in the generations that are coming up now are totally fucked by leftist ideology. Um, the way that women, young women, view men is evil. It is purely as a transaction, as in they are essentially prostitutes every single one and they don't even realize it and the young men what do you mean view women as trophies you know women are now just again they're not people they don't view each other as people the 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 thing a human being is a three-dimensional thing it's it's got a material component and then it's got an emotional component and a spiritual component you know like the the metaphysics we ascribe to what is a person and the thing that we consider, you know, you're not just Chris, you're, uh, you know, you're not just the body of Chris. You are, you know, a, a personality, you know, I'm considerate of you when I'm talking to you and things like this, you know, when you, when you message me on Facebook, like, Hey man, how's it going? You know, so <coughs> I don't just send you a link to my only fans, right. And ask you to subscribe, but that's how a generation of women have been trained by feminists to view men in order not to be oppressed by the patriarchy. Right. And so these women, I think, have been essentially made unable to love men as people, right? They don't really see them as people. They they view them as a kind of competi- a competition, a, like a, a, a competitors on a playing field. And the young men don't know what to do. And so now they're just following their base instincts of, I should try and have sex. I should try and see a woman naked. Uh, you know, And therefore, that's flattening a woman down to merely her biological components. Now it's not even romance, you know? No, it's not about falling in love. It's about send nudes. It's yep. about hookups. Well, it's it's, ob- it's objectification from men to women yeah. and commodification of uh, men from women. Like, yes. yeah. Yes, is it, was it you that said, um, in the same way that porn has skewed men's expectations of women, OnlyFans has skewed women's expectations of men? I've I cited it by you, uh, even if it wasn't. So it, it may well take have been, it because, but because uh, I, I totally agree with that statement. I may have said that um, because it's it's awful how OnlyFans has turned. It's commodified being a girlfriend, right? That's the thing. So everyone thinks, oh, you know, you're just getting nudes. It's just like porn. It's like it's not just like it's porn. emotional and intimacy. I've been, I've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos by women who do OnlyFans who explain what they're doing on OnlyFans. I've never used them. You know, God forbid. My wife would kill me. Um, but uh, so it, basically it seems like it's sort of like a, an online artificial girlfriend service, yep. you know, and the yep. sort of romantic nudes that you'd send to one another and sexy posts and stuff they send to like, you know, 5,000 men or however many it is. It's like, right, that's not good. Is it, you know, that's, that's pretending to have an intimate relationship with thousands of different men. And it's not surprising that there have been a, recently a bunch of only fan models who have been murdered by subscribers. No models. way. Yeah, no, no. We recently did a video. That, in fact, it should be out on podcast the Lotus uh, already by the time this goes up. Uh, it's not out yet, though. But um, yeah, we've got you know three examples in the last week where subscribers have murdered these people. And there was one guy who had gone to Florida, stalked an OnlyFans model, murdered her, and then written on like the walls, "I shouldn't have come. It's her fault for making me love her," or something like that, and stuff like this. And it's just like, look, this is warped what it is to be in an romantic and sexual relationship like pretending that we can just commodify these things and that's all a human being needs is not true and you know, that there's a- both both people on both sides can detach their emotions from the situation that the guy isn't going to feel anything more than well yeah. he knows that this is just messages he knows that this is just work and the but same as the, the yeah precisely they yeah, can't switch they that off it's- they can't switch that emotional uh, situation exactly. off but but for the the sort of Gen Z woman, 
men are merely a mode of transaction because they've been indoctrinated by feminists in their schools and just in the culture at large to view men as being part of an oppressive structure and they have to be on their guard against men you know men are here to take something from you men are dangerous to women you know you've got to you've got to view them as a thing to get money from well if they're resources. the enemy then defeating the enemy makes sense but the other side of this is exactly. man, i don't know i i wonder what it teaches women not only the women that do only fans but even the women that know that other women do only fans what does it teach them about what their worth is we've literally just said if you enter the world and your primary source of value is your looks or your sex appeal this is a depreciating asset and you need to be very very careful um this is the richest i wouldn't like to guess there is a huge swath of some of the richest people in the uk and in america that are women that are probably getting their money directly from taking their clothes off and sending photos to people that pay them for it. And that's what other women are thinking as well. So by osmosis, almost, there's these role models of women that are in a society that says, girls, you can be a girl boss too, clap back, don't settle for less, be a boss bitch, all of this stuff, be a career woman. Mm -hmm. And also some of the most successful career women that you know are the ones who are using the lowest form of female value to the world yeah. as their way to climb this dominance hierarchy. Like, yeah. it's not good. I don't think it's good for women. I don't think it's good for men either. It's terrible for society in general. You know, it's... it's Again, it, it, it's, it's teaching women that men aren't important and unique things. Because, like, the, the, the root of every relationship... Every relationship is unique, right? Every, and and no one else can have that relationship with you. Your relationship, my relationship to you, my relationship to my wife, my relationship with my sons, they'll never have that relationship ever again, right? You'll always have a different relationship with someone else. And relationships are like a chain, you know, or like a rope, you know. And if you don't, if you don't like keep it in good check, if you don't, you know, do the things that the other person appreciates, and if they don't reciprocate and do the things you appreciate, then the relationship fades and frays and ends up breaking. You know, and there can be other ways of breaking it, but like it, it's it's something you have to nurture, something you have to take care of, and something that is what I think is the the genuine content of the human experience. And I think that this is why, that if you go back a hundred years, people were so much poorer but they were not on antidepressants. They weren't all depressed. They weren't all sad because they had their families. They had their friends. They had their social life. They had a reason to live, you know, oh, I've got to go to over to Mavis's house and, and pick up her groceries for her, you know, and stuff like this. And you feel good about doing something good for someone else. Mavis will probably make you a cup of tea when you get there and you have a nice little chat and things like this. Like the, this, these, these relationships are the genuine, the, the, what makes life worth living. You know, ostracization used to be a punishment. You know, and now people are literally just ostracized on their phones thinking, God, I hope Twitter gives me some likes today. From who? You don't know. You don't know any of these people. You know? Some men also are choosing to ostracize themselves yeah. consciously. You know, that's what MGTOW yeah. is. What are those guys in the apartment blocks in China or Japan? There's a particular name for Herbivore them. Herbivore man. Her, yeah, them, plant man yeah. or whatever it is. Um, yeah, and, and men, yeah. you know, these are guys that are consciously yeah. choosing to just exit society yeah. in the, the way that we would typically see it what's happening people if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe peace